you know, my kids are starting to play sports and, you know, don't ask me. I don't know. I never played any sports. So, um, yeah, when it comes to racing. I know a lot about that. Everything else, not so much. So, Michael McDowell, it is media day for the Daytona yeah. 500, but I don't really want to talk about that right now. I'm more astonished that this guy has never been to a tennis match, <laughs> has never been to uh, a golf tournament. This guy, born and raised in Phoenix, never to the Waste Management Open, I know. Uh, just too busy running race cars? You know, I think it mostly yes, right? Like, I grew up racing, and racing's a weekend sport, so never had a lot of weekends to go do anything else, and, yeah, I just wasn't playing any other sports. I wasn't engaged in any other sports. So, um, yeah, a lot of a lot of firsts for me these last few years, getting to go experience a couple different things. But it's uh, it's funny because, you know, my kids are starting to play sports. And, you know, don't ask me. I don't know. I never played any sports. So, um, yeah, when it comes to racing, I know a lot about that. Everything else, not so much. But let's be honest, NFL in Phoenix, when the Cardinals came there, they blew, they stunk. So you didn't have any NFL team to gravitate towards. The Cowboys were the most popular team in Phoenix yeah. at the time. So now yes, with the NFL, were. Major League Soccer, and all these other sports, how do you coach your kids? Or do you say, nope, that's not daddy's bag. <laughs> so you know what I remember about the, the Cardinals? Cardinals used to play in the ASU Stadium, right? The best thing to ever have in an ASU stadium was that Supercross race that they would bring there every year. That was awesome. Um, so I've been, I've been there for a Supercross. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's cool to see Arizona, though. I mean, it's always been a, a sports town, but it really started booming um, really right when I left, actually. We had the Suns, obviously, and then the Coyotes and Diamondbacks, and Glendale goes nuts and crazy and new arena, new stadium. So it's, uh, it's cool to see so much happening there. You didn't answer my question. How do you coach your children in other oh, sports? Easy. I tell them, ask your mom. She was the athlete. Uh, she played all the sports, so she's definitely the coach when it comes to that. Um, but all seriousness, right? Like, I grew up in the 80s and 90s, so we were outside kids. So we played sports. I just didn't do it, um, you know, under any sort of organization. So my son was like, well, if you never played basketball, how do you know how to play basketball? I'm like, because when I was a kid, we were outside kids. We, we had to play outside. So you learned how to play everything. Um, yeah, so just, just a different upbringing. That brings to mind Crasher and our daughter Henley are back in Phoenix. And with your relationship with your wife and your children, you couldn't be standing here without the support of the better half. Yeah. Uh, tell us what that means to huh. you and how that's been contributing to your success and continued uh, to race. Yeah, so... Um, my wife sent it to me this morning, so it's fresh on my mind. It's Valentine's Day, right? Uh, so this is 23 years my wife and I have um, spent Valentine's Day together. And so if you just look at that, we're like so many highs, so many lows, so many unknowns and uncertainties throughout you know, my career. And you know she's been a part of it all. I mean, we met in middle school and been together uh, since we were 15. So you know, truly all the highs and lows we've uh, experienced together. And... Um, and there was times where I was just trying to get to the racetrack and she was working at home and taking care of bills and, and vice versa. And so it's been a complete team effort. And yeah, it's super special. I think it's super rewarding though too for her because she knows how hard it is to get here because it was hard for her too. And so she didn't kind of come into success. Like she was a part of it when it wasn't so much fun. And, um, and she knows how important it is and what it means. And, um, and she's really helped our kids to understand that, hey, it wasn't always like this. You know, it wasn't always uh, this glamorous. So it's, um, it's been a, a fun journey. I was just telling someone with Sirius recently the story about you calling in <laughs> on, your, on your honeymoon night. That was when we were doing our special Sirius satellite saturday show yeah where were you where was your wedding and the honeymoon where were you when you called into speed freaks yeah so um our wedding was in in arizona in glendale and there was a little in between time there where uh the wedding was over we had like uh a small reception mm -hmm. but then we were going to my parents house and they were having like a another 
post reception reception. And so we were going back to the hotel to change and switch out clothes and put on normal clothes and all that stuff. And that's when I called you guys. Um, I was like, oh, I'll have a window there at a time. But it really goes back to, I know it's a funny story, but that's how serious I was about my racing. Like if there was an opportunity, you needed to take it. And it didn't matter if you were getting married. It didn't matter if somebody had a birthday party. It didn't matter. Like it just, it was so important at the time that you did whatever you could to keep your career going and keep moving. And now it seems crazy, but at the time it wasn't crazy at all. It wasn't even a thought. It was like, of course I would, <laughs> you know? So, um, yeah. You remember what you were running then and why we had you on at the time? Yeah, I was running in the, um, in IMSA in prototypes at the time it was the Rolex yeah. series. We had just won Mexico city and it was two weeks after when in Mexico city. So we were talking about that. Yeah. One of the fun things about 2021 for the Daytona 500 was coming here and seeing your car in the infield and just the shrapnel all over that car and people gathering around that yellow car, Michael McDowell, Daytona 500 winner. Go back to prior to that race, your race win to where you are now. I know you're older, mentally you're <laughs> maybe more stable. Yeah. Do you race the 500 any differently than you did in the COVID <laughs> 2020? Yeah. No, I hope not. Um, I think that hasn't really, well, the mindset of winning at all costs hasn't changed. Um, the approach from 2021 to now is different though. And not because of me, but just because of this next gen car. The way the next gen car races at Daytona, it's just different. And so for me, I've had to learn new skill sets to be good here in the next gen car. Um, and so it was a little bit of a reset for me of like, okay, what I did then hasn't been working now. So what do I have to do to, to get to victory lane again? Um, but as far as the level of intensity and the want and the drive, that hasn't changed. If anything, it's more because you see how big it is. Like you dream of winning the 500, mm -hmm. but until you do it, you don't know what it's like. Well, now that I know what it's like, I know how, how cool it is and, and how important it is. And, and so you want to do it again. And so, um, you know, we're prepared, we're ready to go. I think this is a, a really good shot for us. Do you find now that you are a 500 winner, you clawed your way to the top, you clawed your way through the ranks of motorsports. Now that you have that ring, now that you have that title of 500, the 500, people treat you different? Um, yes, people treat you different. I don't think competitors do. Um, and I don't think really industry does either. I mean, I think that people that have known me for a long time know me and, and it hasn't really changed anything, but the outside of that immediate bubble, it has a pretty big ripple effect, right? And so for your partners and your team and uh, manufacturers and all those things, it, it's a big deal. And so, um, but inside your circle, it doesn't really change. Yeah, you're still the same guy. You're still the a-hole or the yeah. nice guy. Yeah. Right? yeah, that's exactly it, yeah. Ask my friends, they'll tell you. <laughs> You take car maintenance seriously, and you want to pass on that legacy of care. Use Lucas Heavy Duty Oil Stabilizer to shield your engine from excessive heat, debris, and friction. Trust Lucas Oil. It works. General Tire delivers. Woo! Back again. Yes, indeed. Ludicrous, I'm hotter than Nevada. Yeah.